Okay, thank you for the opportunity to be here with you and share a little bit of knowledge produced by some activists and, and academics from Brazil. Okay, I would like to thank my Travestist friends who helped me to, to make this paper to present to you. Her, uh, her, uh, their names are uh, Deborah Lee, Fernanda Riquelme, and Glaucia Bulepa. Uh, this paper discusses the expansion of the uh, concept of transfeminism in Brazil and the relationship of that concept to the political practices of the social movements in tra uh, of travestis and transsexuals. In Brazilian society, the word travesti does not have the same meaning as, uh, as transvestite. Travestis are people who are designated male at birth but living according to the female gender. They perform a series of bodily changes to help their bodies achieve a female appearance. But the formal definition of travesty in Portuguese language dictionary is like English language understands as being transvestite. When, uh, when Susan Stryker last year, a North American academic on trans issues, asked me about transfeminism was, go, uh, was going in Brazil, I was intrigued because there was not, not much information available at that time. This concept started to be spreading just five years ago in the academic world in Brazil. I tried to gather information from travestis and you and female transsexuals, and the, the national trans organizations. When asked to Diamond, a travesty, sex work, and a remarkable activist for long standing about the idea of transfeminism is a contemporary political movement for the achievement of social rights of travesties in Brazil, she replied, Josely, is that something to eat or to drink? <laughs> Followed by hot laugh. Diamond has been a regular participant in the national meetings of travestis and transsexuals working in fight against the AIDS in Brazil. These, uh, these meetings called the end lights. At annual meetings for more than 20 years, this group has demanded that the Brazilian government recognize the rights of its members. Diamond's ironic response expresses the extremely limited knowledge about transfeminism that exists among Brazilian travesty and female transsexual activists. However, this concept is slowly becoming a feature of the academic field of gender and sexuality studies. The first Brazilian book on subject was published in 2014 under the title Transfeminism, Theories and Practices, edited by Jacqueline Gomes de Jesus. The challenge for transfeminism in Brazil to try to break down the walls of the elitist Brazilian academy means that it will have to engage with the knowledge that are constructed from the hard daily lives of Brazilian and transsexuals, which are marked by extreme social and economic exclusion. These are the groups that are most vulnerable to violent and premature death within the Brazilian LGBT community. The average, uh, the average life expectancy of travestis is 35 years old while the general population life expectancy is 75, according to Antunes 2010. The introduction of transfeminism into the Brazilian Academy has just the latent potential to break with the modern European epistemic tradition, which ranks its own knowledge as being superior to the various knowledges of vulnerable social groups. Science serves to name and categorize a reality, and in this way it produces a logic that ends up being shared even by groups that are violated by scientific discourse. Therefore, understanding how travesties and female Brazilian transsexuals have constructed 
their identities among uh, political struggle is of fundamental importance in establishing a path that can lead towards liberation. And for, uh, from this perspective, I would see the importance of the knowledge possessed by travesties Diamond, Pearl, and Ruby, who in 2013, through the auspices of intellects that that meeting I told you, analyzed the categories of identity which have provoked much controversy with the travesty and the transsexual movements in Brazil. Brazilian travesties established a specific movement of their own within the broader Brazilian LGBT movement, despite the stigmatization they suffer within that <coughs> very movement. The issue of how to refer to themselves linguistically was the subject of numerous discussions in group meetings. During the last few years, a growing number of people in these meetings no longer self-identified as travesty, often expressing this uh, self-identification saying by saying something to effect of. Jocelyn, before I thought I was a travesty, but now I think I'm a transsexual. This positioning confirmed the idea that process connected with identity are relational and are spatial temporally situated. The spread of public discussions of transsexuality in Brazilian society, as well as increased access to medical techniques, have increased the tensions in the relationships between travesties and female transsexuals. The possibility of accessing a transsexuality identity predicated as it is on medical and legal procedures has only recently become a reality from Brazilian travesties. This, uh, this has led to a diversification of identity claims and has exacerbated tensions within and between the two groups. The fluidity of identity, which is common to how human beings uh, has been object of paradoxical interpretation by travesties. Their discussions simultaneously combine the potential of gender subversion and the internalization of medical discourse. Per, for example, she denies the existence of essential identities, but at the same time offers definition that distinguish travesties and female transsexuals based on the relationship they, uh, this, that this, these people may have with their genitals, genitalia. She, she said, I think that it is an absurd to put labels on people to know who they are. I use the term travesty to define myself and to me, that is a political issue. I could also define myself a transsexual, but I prefer to be a travesty. And that is a question of militancy, because the stigma associated with the word travesty is much greater than the stigma associated with being called a transsexual. The social weight of condemnation for travesties is much heavier than it is for transsexuals. Look, if I say I'm a transsexual, society says, poor thing, because they think they am sick and that I did not choose this path. No, I don't want that. I am a travesty. And for me, this is a political position. For me, there is no difference in being a travesty or a transsexual, but speaking technically, I am a travesty because I'm a transsexual has trouble, has trouble uh, accepting the body they have, and I don't have any problem about having a penis. But I can see that being a transsexual is easier because you are forgiven by society you have it put in your self-effort to be corrected. That's not being a travesty. 
Being a travesty means contradicting everything, fighting, and being what you are without anyone else's approval. For Ruby, another militant travesty, the rise of uh, transsexual subjectivity in Brazil is linked to an attempt by some people to overcome the fact that the word travesty is linked by many with the prostitution, violence, poverty, and the disease. According to Ruby, she says, an aversion to one's biological body, specifically the genitals, cannot be the only element that distinguishes, bet distinguishes bet uh, between a travesty from a transsexual. Diamond, another travesty, also questions the boundaries between travesties and female transsexuals. She says, there are people who say that they are transsexual just so that they won't be like us travesties. But you know, Josie, but I have caught several of them masturbating a lot. So, that why is, well, that is this, what is this story about disliking their penis? I don't believe they don't take pleasure for it. For it, for me, that's a joke. Travesty discourses provoke questions about the limits of identity and the impossibility of defining boundaries between Brazilian travesties and female transsexuals. However. There is still a tendency to refer to medical concepts when defining travesties and female transsexuals, <coughs> even within those groups themselves. It is important to know that while the depathologization of transsexuality is essential to academic transfeminist discussions, this topic is not a priority in the political meetings of travesties and transsexuals. There is a certain fear of their part that the depathologization process might jeopardize their, their inclusion in the national health system in Brazil. At the Antilites Conference in, in, in Brazil in September 2013, a new controversy surrounding the use of the term travesty occurred. Um, one of, the, one of the working groups proposed by the organizers to the event was intended to discuss the fact that uh, there should be the demands that the Portuguese dictionary should contain a definition of the word travesty that was considered to be appropriated for use by travesties themselves. The female transsexual group presented the meeting proposed to delete the word travesty from the dictionary because there was a consensus among both female transsexual and travesties that the word did not express the experience of travesties. According to one of the discussions that followed, they, say, they said, okay, being a travesty entails living 20 hours a day as a female, including performing, of performing bodily changes using hormones and injection of industrial silicone. All techniques of bodily transformation in Brazil are clandestine uh, and deemed uh, to be illegal under Brazilian law. They also suggested that travesty experience could be adequately expressed through the dictionary definition of transsexual. For them, according to the group, that made this proposal, the dictionary definition of transsexual is a person, usually male, who wants to belong to the opposite sex and who if